them say and listen very carefully my friend that God is unlike his creation God sends messengers so God sends prophets Muhammad is a prophet upon whom be peace Jesus is a prophet upon whom be peace Abraham no, these are all sent by God to their community to bring them back to worshiping God. They have more significance for you. You probably may be aware how we Muslims pray to God five times a day. So what we do, we bow and prostrate God at five set times as a recognition of our Creator. And more fascinatingly enough, this is how the prophets in the Old Testament prayed. In, in the book of Psalm in 95.6, Moses is directed rather that how one should offer one's prayer. It says, come let us worship. Let us bow before our Lord, let us kneel in prostration before our Maker. It's even telling us how one should offer the prayer, exactly how we do it. Then, before we offer a little prayer, we do a little hand wash, followed by finishing by washing our feet after we wash other parts of the body. That's how Moses would pray in the Old Testament, where he'd wash his hands and finish by washing his feet before he offered congregational prayers to pray to God alone. And even Jesus in the New Testament, when he's in trouble at the Garden of Gethsemane, when the Jews are going to take him away to crucify him, he goes into that garden, he spends the night in prayer, and he goes on his hands and knees, and he prostrates with his face on the ground, we do, praying to God to help him. Make sense? So this is what I'm saying. And for example, the fact that you're even listening to me, in, we have an understanding, I'm not an Arab, but the Arabic term is that, um, God puts an inclination within our heart, the Arabic word is called fitra, to know of Him. So even if we have, whatever we're going through in our lives, a, a compulsion to understand God is intrinsically within us. And hence, when someone speaks, it resonates. And when, for example, you, you may be listening, I mean, you, and hope it, hopefully it's resonating within you, what I'm saying. So we've got many people converting to this religion, who are stable-minded, who are reasonable. We've got this brother on the left, for example, an Englishman who became Muslim and people of all different ethnicities. You may be aware of people who become Muslims yourself. But the point I'm trying to address to you is the most, most um, um, comprehensive way of living one's life in accordance with God. We have to give 2.5% of our annual um, savings to the poor and needy. And one could assume that if we incorporate all that in our lives, world poverty would be eradicated forever, rather than paying all these ridiculous taxes that we pay. Precisely. So, so the invitation to the religion is understanding that me and you, my friend, we weren't here 70 years ago. And it's very unlikely we're going to be another 70 years. So we have to prepare for our hereafter. That those who reject that or mock it and laugh at it, the, mock, the mocking is on themselves because we're essentially here as a miracle itself. And then we will, be, we will be resurrected in front of our Creator and be answerable for our actions on this earth. Oh, yeah. We'll be answerable. Oh, I, I, I agree. I, I, agree. I mean, my friend, any, anybody, if you look around, I don't care what anyone says. Anyone who thinks this is an accident has got to be very, very out of, their fickle, out of their mind. Because there is no way that yeah. we're all being created, yes. we're all different, and if you look, there's a form of organisation on the earth, and where there's organisation, there must be an organiser. Ah, oh, brilliant. This is what we like. You know, as Muslim, listen, check this out. What's your name? Barry. Barry, my Mustafa. Delighted to meet you, my son. Barry. Barry, this is exactly how when we go around speaking to the people of the public, this is exactly what you said is a method that we apply. It has to be an organiser. There has to be, um, you know, a, a set method in which everything has come about. Anyone, this all came out of randomness and out of nothing. That makes no sense whatsoever. So hence, once you've understood that, then it, Barry, what we've got to observe, what is that creator's demand for us? It makes no sense whatsoever that he creates us purposelessly. So for example, he's not going to say to us, woohoo, here, here you are, I've created you, I'll see you in a few thousand years, and then I'll judge you. It makes no sense. Just like it makes no sense that a universe without design, like we just made, made mention. Now, if for example, Barry, before the advent of the mobile phone, I was to hand you this device, no one's seen it in the world, and I was to tell you, you could speak to someone in Australia with this device. All right, have a look. What's the first thing you're going to ask me after? If I said to you, you are, do you know how to operate it? You're going to say, no. What, what would you expect that I give you to operate it? A manual, a guide. True. True. So by the same example, God sends us guidance to mankind by the form of revelation upon how he wants us to live so we understand what is his requirements. We've already established a creator. We've already established what that creator expects, what, what he wants from us because creating us for no purpose makes no sense.
sense whatsoever. So hence, he sends revelation. <coughs> that understanding, the, the Jews had the Christians had the New Testament. The final testament given to by God to mankind is the Quran, revealed for all of mankind. Whereas the other world scriptures, like the Old Testament and New Testament, they only came for a set people at a set time. Even Christ says to the, to the uh, non-Jews, I have not come for you, I have not come except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He says, do not go to the Gentiles, meaning the non-Jews. That's his specific task. Whereas Islam claims to be a universal message for all of mankind. The Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace, God's final messenger to mankind for eternity and that is that is what we have to we have to follow the Islamic tenets. Now is this exclusive? Can we then therefore summarily reject us? No, because essentially in all our other world scriptures God is one as well. But what they then do is that they are so partners with that God because of different authorship of these books. So the New Testament, it, it was written by a whole host of different people. You know, dozens and dozens of people wrote the New Testament. They all put their little slant on it, what they believed, about such and such and, what, and, and such and such. But Islam claims to be, the Quran claims to be the only book on the face of the earth, the express direct verbatim word of God from, from cover to cover. It's got no one else's um, understanding it precisely. So it's quite unique and distinct in that format, you see. It's a very name Islam. So Muslims are the uh, adherents to the faith. Islam is the name of the religion. Look, it's even compared to all the other world religions, even the name is different. Judaism from the land of the tribe of Judah. So that takes it from a geographical area and a tribe. Christianity, from Christ, Christianity, although he never named it, this was later named after him. Then you get Buddhism, after Buddha, or Hinduism, after the land of Indus. Oh, thank you. Please, go, go take one, pal. All right, pal. So basically, it's from this, so in essence, what we're observing is that Islam means something unique and distinct. Islam means submission to the will of God. So whilst all the other world religions take its um, name from its major protagonist or from a geographical area, Islam doesn't do that. It's very named. What we will say perversely, Barry, which, well, which may seem perverse to many people, is we will claim that all the prophets of God, which I made mention, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, upon whom be peace, they were Muslim. And you're going to think, what on earth are you talking about? They came from a line of, of Jews. But what we say to them is that the, the, they were the ones who submitted their will to God. So God, Christ, Jesus says in the Bible, for example, I do not do my will, but the will of God who has sent me. Of my own free will I can do nothing. So I hear as I judge, and my judgment comes from God. For I seek to do not my will, but the will of God who has sent me. Make sense? So that's Islam in a nutshell. Abraham, there was no Judaism or Christianity at the time of Abraham. What, what was Abraham? Neither a Jew or a Christian, but he was a Muslim, meaning one who submitted his will. What God commanded, he says, I hear and I obey. That is the definition of a Muslim. So in retrospect, this is what we invite you to, understanding the one true God, who's unlike his creation, his due worship. The Quran, the final revelation to, by God to mankind, is a complete guide upon how we should lead our lives from every point and every juncture, from appreciating the five daily prayers, appreciating our Creator, fasting in the month of Ramadan, which we do. Once, why do we fast? So that we appreciate what we have and what others do not have. And at the same respect, making us better individuals, making us more rounded and um, inculcating godliness into our lives. And then give charity, as I made mention. So these are all fundamental tenets. Be honest, be, be, be respectful, give, giving you a smile when I greet you. This is a, a form of worship and a form of charity. So the utopia of God, what God wants us, us to be, is defined as a Muslim. A Muslim is one who is perfect in the sense of one who adheres to the word of God and lives that and according to that um, understanding. And hence, this is what we're inviting people towards, because the reality is that we're going to perish one day. And then, as you've already agreed, we're going to be accountable for our actions. And then God's going to say, okay, Bao, you had a conversation with Mustafa at such and such day in Stratford on such and such hour. So what, what did we get out of it? Did you recognize me or did we just say, 
carry on without, with our lives without recognizing that creator who is worthy. So hence, Islam is the way to go. It doesn't reject the Old Testament or the New Testament, but it inculcates and brings into fruition the errors that manufactured itself within those, those scriptures and then comes as a exempl exemplar or a, um, a, um, a filter to tell us the reality. This message will be preserved forever. It's the only book which actually claims that this is a book where God will protect from any un corruption. So this is something about I'd invite you to Islam. Make sense? It does. I will read that. And as I said, I was born C of eight. Yeah. But I mean, I will, as I say, I'll take, I mean, I'll, I know some Turkish people that are, are, are Muslims, you know what I mean? Fantastic. And so, yeah, I mean, I can all, but I will, I will have a look. Can I give you... Right, those are little mics, so what we've spoken about will be... Um, Put up on YouTube. If you don't want your face on there, or we can blur you out totally. If that's what you so can prefer. You, yeah, can you, is that all right? I promise you that will be the case. You can watch it on a station called Sam Dawa. D A W A H. It may take him some time to upload it up, but put that, put it. I mean, put it Sam in your Dawa. Sam Dawa. Can I give you also a copy of the Quran in English free of charge in two seconds flat? Fantastic.